All right, going to take some time here to answer a letter from Texas that we got in the mail and um, on the Godhead issue. He says here, hello, my name is, I'll skip the name there for privacy's sake. I recently found your YouTube channel, King James Video Ministries, and have been watching your videos on the Godhead for the last few days as I follow along with my King James Bible. First, I want to say thank you for opening my eyes to this issue. I have talked to lots of Christians, and they all have given me the same answer about the Trinity, where it's three different gods, but yet one God, and it is really confusing. I did have a few questions, uh, though I'm hoping to find answers to. So the first question is, I noticed in the Ruckman Theological Studies, Volume 1 book, he says on the subject of the Trinity that it is not a Roman invention. I was a little confused by that. I know that in your videos you say that the Trinity comes from Roman Catholicism and they teach three separate gods, each one having the title God, but yet he preaches the Godhead when he explains this, body, soul, spirit, one God. So is it possible that he is trying to say that the Godhead is in the Bible and that the Godhead is not a Roman invention, but he is just mistakenly using Catholic terms such as Trinity and God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost? That's my first question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have talked about the thing of Peter Ruckman before, but just to answer it again, again here, um, Ruckman had uh, a lot of issues. He was a, a good man. I don't believe he's in hell. You know, this is one of his drawings back here. Um, a lot of people, you know, tend to say, well, I found a few things wrong with him and whatever else, and so he's an arch heretic and whatever. You have to look at the, the whole of the man's work and say, okay, what all did he put out? What all? What was the fruit of his ministry and whatever else? And I've met a lot of PBI graduates. Some are idiots and some are really good men. Um, so just want to say that about Ruckman. Um, what he did is he said he taught the Godhead doctrine. He's the one I learned it from. But then he would try to blend it with Trinitarianism. You know, the all the different terms of Trinitarianism. And you can't do it. It can't be done. So he was taking what he was reading in theological books and trying to blend it with what the King James Bible teaches, and you can't do that. Just as simple as that. But in terms of is the Trinity, the concept of the Trinity of Roman Catholic origin? Well, technically no, because it's Tertullian, and Tertullian was a church father, and he lived before the Catholic Church was officially there, so technically... <laughs> I look at it, I, the church fathers are a joke to me. I don't care what they had to say about most things and whatever else. They would come out with a few nice little things that they say, um, fine. But uh, I don't really take them seriously because they were heretical in so many areas and, and whatever. I mean, really terribly heretical. Um, but the Catholic Church, they hold the church fathers as these sort of a, on an equal level with Scripture. And that's why I say... The Trinity is of Catholic origin, you know, because without the without the Catholic Church, the Trinity philosophy would have died out. So the Catholic Church kept the Trinity doctrine going that Tertullian came up with. So that's why I call it a Roman Catholic teaching, because they were the ones who preserved it. Okay, God preserved the Bible. The Catholic Church preserves the writings of the Church Fathers and whatever else. Um, and there were others that they deemed to be heretics, and they just burned what they wrote, and you don't even know what they actually said. Sibelius so is one of those that, you know, he wrote some things about the Trinity slash Godhead or whatever, how God, the makeup of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and his writings were burned. And the Catholic Church says, well, we'll tell you what his writings said, but you just can't see any of his original writings because we burned him. He was a heretic. <laughs> he might have been a... a his, what he taught might have actually been good, and the Catholic Church just skews what he says, but we'll never know until we get to be with the Lord. So why would the Catholic Church preserve the writings of Tertullian and destroy the writings of Sibelius? Kind of an odd thing. So that's why I call the Trinity a Catholic, that its origins are Roman Catholic. But you could make the argument, well, Tertullian technically wasn't a Roman Catholic because the Roman Catholicism didn't really exist at the time by name, and you know, I get it. My second question is this. Uh, in one of your videos, you said that we are made in the image of God, but as you continue reading in the book of Genesis chapter 5, verse 3, it's, it says, Adam lived in 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. I think I understand what you were saying. In other words, 
You are saying that we are made in the image of God in the sense that we are body, soul, and spirit, but because Adam chose to disobey God, he fell and his spirit died. Therefore, every man born after Adam has a dead spirit, but they are still a three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. I was just wanting to make sure I wasn't misunderstanding you on that subject. Yes, that's basically what it means. It's just that Adam is the son of God. He's the created son of God. Jesus Christ is the begotten, the only begotten son of God. Um, so, you know, there was probably some similarities there just even in, in appearance and whatever else because of the way that, you know, Adam was the created son of God. But everybody, Adam and everyone down through to you and me today, we all have, we're made up of three things, three parts. And again, these Trinitarians, they'll make a big deal about that. It doesn't say three persons, but you then say three parts and it doesn't say three parts. Okay, what do you say? What body, soul, spirit, what is it? <laughs> You know, uh, three items, three things, three parts, three, I don't even know what to say. You know, I, I just, parts just make sense. If you have, uh, hey, this, this, uh, whatever thing broke here or whatever this, okay, I'll just say it this way. Here I have a knife, okay? Um, it falls and, you know, comes apart and you say, well, what happened? Well, there's just a bunch of parts there. I need to put the parts back together. I mean, it's just the most logical thing to say about a man. I have body, soul, and spirit. I'm made after the image of God. <laughs> but see, the Trinitarians, they'll strain out a gnat and swallow their camel of Trinitarian philosophy. You know, get, oh, you say parts and not person. Whatever. My third question is, is this. When it comes to the Holy Spirit quickening our spirit, our spirit is made alive, but did the Holy Spirit meld his spirit with ours, or is it just he made my spirit alive and his spirit is in me as well? I'm just kind of confused on this subject. Hopefully you can help me understand this. If you can make a video on these things, that would be great. Have a blessed day. Um, the, I believe that your spirit, like you said, is dead. And when the Holy Spirit, when you get saved, your spirit is quickened. I likened it to a radio that has that's powered by batteries and the radio is just dead that's the dead spirit the, you put batteries into it and now it has power to play and you know have music come through it well i think it's the same thing with us that our spirits are dead but when we get saved the holy spirit quickens us he makes us alive okay now how does that work in terms of do we now have two spirits or something the our, my spirit and then the Holy Spirit, two different spirits inside of us or something, or is it just the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you? Um, I would say the power of the Holy Spirit there, uh, certainly. Um, but a, a good question there. Um, so, yes, I would say that, yeah, definitely the, the Holy Spirit quickens our spirit. It's not that he has to move in and whatever else, but then, you know, you also read about Christ in you and also the Father being in us. So there's the thing of that spiritual fellowship. Um, there's a lot of things about the Bible that are, it's just written the way it is and, you know, believe it. That's the simple thing there. Uh, well, can you explain it, everything, just to the, give me a good earthly description of how this thing breaks down? No, I can't. Because there are certain things that are eternal and we just can't really get a good, clear way of how it works out. Um, you know, explain the Godhead. Well, it's like an orange. It has the outer skin, the fruit, and the seed. Yeah, not really. That doesn't really work for trying to explain God. Um, the best way to explain God is to explain ourselves because that's what the Bible says. We're made after the similitude of God. It doesn't say an egg is made after the similitude of God or water, you know, uh, hydrogen, you know, what is it, H2O, the H, there's two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. That's so, it's, it's like God. Or water that, you know, it's solid and liquid and, you know, gaseous or something. No, that's not what the Bible says. You get into that philosophical stuff, you start running into trouble. Um, the Bible says man is made after the similitude of God. See, Trinitarians constantly are saying, well, let me explain how the Trinity works. And they'll use a golf ball, a football, a, you know, water, like I said. They'll use all these different things, but they reject the fact that the King James Bible plainly says in the book of James, man is made after the similitude of God. You don't have to look any further than just man 
to be able to say this is what God is like. Body, soul, spirit. One person. There are no three persons. You know, Brian Denlinger is three different persons. No, he's not. He's one person and he has three parts. Whatever you want to come up with there, if you're a Trinitarian. Oh, I, I reject the word parts. Okay, then <laughs> go strain at a gnat and swallow your camel. Whatever. Um, so thank you very much for your letter. Um, and I will just say this again. I'll put this out there. I've done this for years. To any of my enemies out there, you have a similar opportunity. All you have to do, just take a envelope. I'm going to hide his address here. Envelope. Write out a letter. Put it in an envelope. To Brian Denlinger, King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Little stamp there. It doesn't cost you much money. Okay. Put it in the mail. Send it to me. If you want, send it by certified mail so I have to sign for it so that you know I got it. Write me a nice little letter, concise to the point. Don't, make, don't send me some manuscript that's 30 pages or something like that. I don't want that. Send me a little letter and say, please answer these quest questions. I think that you're a heretic. I think that you're lost and you're wicked and whatever else, Brian Denlinger. And I want to expose you. Here are my questions. I mean, I know your little live streams and your little things and videos and whatever else are a lot more fun and exciting and whatever makes you feel better about yourself. But if you really want to take me down or expose me as being a full heretic or whatever, send me a letter, certified mail. There you go. If I don't answer it, then you can say, Brian Dunlinger's afraid to answer me. You know, I challenge Brian Dunlinger to a debate. Send me a letter. Okay? Get your points written out nice and concise. Send it to me in a letter. Okay, you know, it's uh, sending letters is sort of a practice that appears in a certain book. You know, something to think about there. So that, that is going to be it. Thank you again for the letter, like I said. And uh, we're going to be doing a study next on the thing of why Jesus called the Father my God. So please stay tuned for that study. Get your King James Bible out, have it all ready to go, and uh, should be an interesting study. Thank you for watching.